Hey everyone, Joe Lyons here, and this morning I'm talking with Ryan Wells. Um, Ryan, why don't you go ahead and introduce yourself real quick? Oh, actually, Hi, yeah, sorry, let be more specific. Um, talk about your education and focus, if you have background in programming, um, your work history, and your current job title, and a little bit about of your where you live and live. Yeah, you bet, no worries. So I, uh, I started programming way back last century. I uh, started with BASIC. I know you... Uh, You've done a little bit and talked about that in previous episodes. I uh, started way back in the 80s, uh, got a computer magazine from the local news agent and was typing out practically hands-on uh, scripts from the back of the magazine. And I slowly over time sort of learned by doing. Yeah. And uh, that was kind of my first experience of programming when I was eight or nine and started doing that, bought my own first computer and, and started working in that way. And then I'd always started to really um, take an interest more in, in programming and development more than, and making things more than playing games. And that was sort of stayed with me all my life. And then uh, when I was leaving school, I got a, like a summer job uh, working with um, programming in Microsoft applications. So I was hacking around with Word and Excel and that sort of thing, and some v, early VB script. Mm -hmm. And then uh, off the back of that, uh, I went to university and I wasn't really sure what I wanted to do. And I, uh, uh, started doing a computer science and politics degree, which is a very strange mix, but uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah well, I, I wasn't sure what I wanted to do, but I, ultimately I gravitated into advertising and media. And so I worked in radio and, and print, and then I moved into sport, which is my other big love. And I worked for the Australian Olympic Committee for five years. And that was amazing because it brought lots of cultures together and it also presented lots of challenges in terms of uh, information because it's a huge amount of information. And I started again, I suppose, sort of rekindled my automation journey there. And uh, I was the head of digital, the digital program in the early 2000s, uh, worked in the same Australia, and um, was looking at how we could manage whole lots of information, obviously in real time, a lot of information coming at us, and how we could repurpose all this content uh, for republication or what have you. Um, and obviously automation and technology was a really big part of that to make us be able to do all the heavy lifting without a whole lot of people. Cool. Um, um, in terms of where I've, so I've lived in Australia, I was born in England, but I grew up in New Zealand and I lived in Australia. And then uh, I spent, uh, I came back to uh, the UK in 2006 and spent 10 years there. I worked for a global advertising agency in their uh, uh, communications team, European communications team. And then I had a role as the global applications director. So I've always been around communications and technology. And then in the last few years, I've uh, got sick of the bad weather in the UK and I, uh, I moved to Spain for a while and now I'm based in Eastern Europe. Uh, I've just got married and I'm, I'm living here with my wife. So uh, very much an international uh, sort of background and always in comms and data and communications. Cool. And then um, how long have you been using AutoHotKey? Well, I was thinking about this question and I kind of go through several phases of using AutoHotKey, much like yourself, I think. I started way back, maybe even as much as 10 years ago, and I was working on hot strings. I just yeah. thought that, you know, I've got a whole lot of things I repeat doing all of the time. Right. And I just tipped my toe and, and I already thought that AutoHotKey was an awesome resource. Um, and then perhaps about two or three years ago, uh, I thought, oh, I discovered you could do more with it. And then in the last year or so, and thank you so much for your amazing tutorials and things that really helped me open the door to this plethora of opportunity yeah. around using COM and data manipulation and those sort of things. Then now I automate everything I possibly can. <laughs> There's so much more to it than just even the hot strings. But I've been an evangelist for, for auto hotkey for easily 10 years, just even around hot strings, which I think, yeah. are, uh, you know, <laughs> I agree with you, are really the starting point. Uh, and so valuable to so many people and so accessible and easy to use. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, I claim the vast majority of people I talk to that use auto hockey don't use hot strings. And I'm like, no matter what you do, you have a use for them. Right. And, and people yeah. don't use them and it cracks me up. I mean, it's fine, but I'm like, I, 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 I can't tell you how many I use every day. I mean, it's, it's crazy. And I'm sure other people, they just don't realize like how often they type even any of your passwords or usernames or whatever. I mean, it, yeah, it's so it's useful. So true. I mean, I, I, slow, I'm a little bit like you. I, I encourage people to use it, but there is this inertia. I, I think that they don't understand the value it can bring. And um, I, there's a really interesting, I've done a lot of reading and broadly in this sort of subject. And there's a guy, a really good inspiring story by a, uh, a guy who uh, led the British cycling team called Dave Brailsford. 
And he turned the British cycling team around from a team that had won no medals for 60 or 70 years to the best cycling team in the world in four years. Wow. And what he realized was the law of incremental gains, right? And there's a guy mm. called James Clear, jamesclear.com. He's got an awesome, uh, I'll, I'll send you the link. You might want to post yep. it with the video. Yep. Um, it talks about the power of these little incremental improvements. You know, and I think that's probably the main takeaway that I would have for people watching this about auto hotkey. It's not incredibly time intensive. You know, it's not incredibly resource intensive. It's not incredibly expensive. The software is free. You know, you can do, you can achieve an awful lot in a very short period of time. Mm -hmm. And these small 1% improvements that you can make to your daily life or your workflow have yeah. significant gains over time. And I guess that all starts for me, and I think with you as well, at the very beginning with those hot strings. Yeah, I and I'm trying to remember if because because I think we started talking at the beginning of this year, maybe somewhere in there, but yeah. um, I I can't remember if it was you, but I I've read I thought it was Brian Tracy right when you said incremental gains. I'm like, I remember reading something talking about every it's like once a week if you hey if you do you know one percent better faster like over time right how much more you improve and how much more value of course you can command in your income or whatever, but um it was it was incremental it, it maybe it was something you gave me because it sounds really close to what you're talking about right and mm -hmm. it compounds right that's the whole thing it's like you keep increasing and then then you 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 build you're faster now than than what you were which was also faster than before yeah and in um hot strings alone are they're a great I mean, the context on that is i mean i use hundreds and hundreds of hot strings but i'm adding them every day every day I find something else that I want to add. So yeah. it's not like, I think some people perhaps tip their toe in, in the water and they may, I think that a lot of people perhaps forget <laughs> the strings that they, and I Absolutely. do, I've got something I forget, but I've yeah. got so many for everything that I basically write in abbreviations these days. And people, when they use mobile phones, write in abbreviations for laziness or speed, but you right. can do that in, uh, with auto hotkey on your, on your PC and be much more articulate. And I think yeah. when you realize you can do salutations, you can do, passwords, you can do instructions, you can communicate with um, a lot more clarity and a lot more preciseness yeah. and a lot faster. I mean, it, it's all upside as far as I'm concerned. There's also tools like Lintelist and there's another one, I forget what it's called, but that'll auto assist you. So if you can't remember, you can start typing and then it'll pull up the menu like on your phone and you can pick and choose, right? And it's like, oh yeah, yeah that, that's what I wanted. Yeah, you bet. Yeah, there's a, there's a good auto hotkey uh, script called typing aid and that that's, will- That's one of them, yeah. Yeah, that will learn your dictionary of words that you learn over time and it will recommend the, 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 the strings to use. It's yeah. Because people, if you ask people, you know, how much time do you spend on a computer every day? And then you ask them, uh, what do you do on that computer every day? And what, how much time do you spend typing? You know, the, I would argue the vast majority of people will spend the most time on their computer of any other activity in the day, a lot of people. And then the vast majority of that time will be spent typing. And then you think, well, wouldn't you like to save a few more minutes and be a bit more efficient or save a bit of time? And it's, it's, to me, it's a no-brainer. Yeah. Well, and, and again, I mean, that's, that's, we're mainly talking about hot strings. There's so many other things yeah. that you could tie into using it with hot strings if it automatically launches the other program and does it or, or hits reply yeah. or, you know, puts yeah. in your, yeah. actually a yeah. hyperlink to, to stuff. Absolutely. Um, the automation of, of emails alone, that's, for me, it was, you know, um, when I was in corporate, the, the using um, web scraping and then the, the connecting to Excel and Outlook, those three things were just, and I used them all together often, and it was just so powerful, so easy to automate so many different things I did and give things to other people that they did. And they were, again, I, they didn't they didn't learn how to do it, which I was okay with, but I, I, I like teaching people, right? But um, still, I was, ha I was happy to build a tool that they could use and save a lot of time. Yeah, absolutely. I think it's and it's also very quick to do. I mean, I think the companies, particularly larger corporates, I work with a large corporate, 5,000 people globally, you know, they are um, risk adverse. They are worried about what they don't know about and they don't want to have the time or invest the time to understand. Um, there's often a lot of processes around uh, getting approvals. Unfortunately, Auto Hotkey is free, so it's not a, not a cost resource. But um, I think it's also about margin. They're worried about, you know, if we, if we invest the time or give our employees the ability to do this, you know, is this expertise going to walk out the door or are we going to have something that may fail in the future, which exposes us. But, you know, at the very micro level, like we've just been talking about uh, hot keys, uh, hot strings for the last couple of minutes. I mean, even that one thing can significantly improve the quality and the frequency of communication and improve things a lot. 
you know, you, you mentioned um, auto hotkey being free, and uh, Jackie and I were talking about this the other day. I've, yeah, I guess my background's in market research. I, I have always known things that are free, there's a perceived value that it's, it's just not mm-hmm. that valuable, right? It's free. Mm-hmm. How valuable can it be? And um, it, it's one of those things that's kind of ironic. Like we talked about it even for the webinars, like should we, should we charge? It, would people feel there's more value if we were actually charging for it? Right. And then they would actually show up because, hey, oh, they're, you know, it's, it's, you know, it's not a huge cost, but or even if we did, if it was made at a hundred dollars, I'm not saying we did this. Right. But suddenly there's this perceived value. There's something there like that. There must be really good because they're charged getting a hundred bucks for it. Right. Um, or yeah. whatever it is. And, and it is kind of ironic that it being free for some people stops them from even being interested. Um, it's like the QAP tool from John too. It's like, yes. it's, it's free. And yet it has, uh, I, when I first started bar- using it, I'm like, I so wish I had known about this tool, you know, 10 years ago when I was building all my GUIs and everything. I'm like, now I can drag and drop and it's so fast and easy instead of manually, you know, doing almost all the same stuff his tool does so, so easily. Um, I think there's a few inherent challenges. Like the the first one is because you can practically do almost everything you want to do. And there's not a, a, defined list of things you're able to do and yeah. our answer to everything yeah. is oh we could automate that i think yeah. perhaps it's not as easy to understand because our answer is typically yes we can automate that right um, and i think the second thing is that the way that uh we approach often things is we talk just inherently because we like to code this stuff if we actually approach it from the other way around which i think is the value of the ser- this video series is talking about the problems people are solving with it i yeah. think that the people who are ignorant or don't want to learn or have this inertia, if they understand the types of problems that can be solved, yes. in the practical sense, they're much more likely to engage. Yeah. Um, and unfortunately, sometimes that means you have to do it for them as a bit of show and tell. Yeah. But once you've done that, if they can see the value in that, then they will start to come on board. I know that's my experience with my wife. Uh, uh, she appreciated what I did, but she didn't really understand the value to her. Yeah. And when I did a few things for her, now she proactively says, oh, we could do this and we could do that. And that's very you know, encouraging. Uh, that makes me happy. But also she can see the value in this, which is encouraging, I think. Yeah. Yeah. I, I went down, I think I told you, I went down that path tr- trying to teach my wife how to do it. And um, anyway, she, she, she saw the value when she, I did it. But um, yeah, I didn't get her to uh, adopt it, which I, I'm not faulting her, right? It's like, yeah, sure. it's so rare where people actually do um, end up l- learning it themselves. Um, it's, it's the exception. That's what I was, when, on the interview with Gabe yesterday, we were talking about it because Gabe and I, not every year, but often mo- most years will have what we call a codecation, right? We, we take it like a week off or at least five days and we get together and we program for like 12 to 14 hours a day and just solid, like we, we say, let's, let's learn how to do classes or functions or whatever. And then we just hit it hard and we sit side by side and we learn amazing amounts. But my point was like, it's so rare people are willing to invest you know, on your own time on our vacation, which to me is like there, at the time when I was working in corporate, there was nothing more precious to me than my time off from work. Right. It was like, mm-hmm. I, I guarded that. Like I would go to, to work almost dead, you know, and sick just cause I'm like, I don't want to burn up, you know, a sick day or a work from home. But, um, and yet I'm like, I am, I, I was so excited to take time off and do this cause it was an investment myself. Right. And I knew that, but like, why aren't more people, they don't have to take time off from work. Don't get me wrong, but, but still, why is it a fight to get people to just learn hot strings, right? Like just to spend a few minutes. It just, it, I, I think it's more of a mentality. Um, and, and, and I don't know, part of it's also the, like I ran into this, there's a guy here um, locally where he was, he was talking about, he had automated some stuff at work and then he showed his bosses and they, um, he, they, they basically said, great, and just gave him more stuff to do. And I was showing him, hey, you know, you could do web scraping and do all this other stuff, which he hadn't done yet. And yeah. he's like, well, I don't have the time to do it. I'm like, well, just, you know, you learn on your own time. No, it, that was like such a foreign concept to him to, to mm-hmm. do anything on his own time. And, and it was one of those things of like, well, dude, you're, you know, if, if your work won't let you do it, do it in your own time and then automate it and just don't even tell them, right? And then <laughs> you have time at work to actually, you'll have more time to do yeah. stuff. But that yeah. was that was totally. I'm here. I'm offering to teach him on my own time, you know. Yes. And he wasn't even willing to give up his own time for his own yeah. thing, right? And I'm like, okay, okay, cool, you know, good luck. Um, 
but it is amazing how people don't value it. People who are people, I think businesses, I think I was trying to think because having watched the last few videos about what the sweet spot is. And I, I think it's probably medium enterprises, not, not the big enterprises for the types of inertia we've talked about, about, you know, corporate culture, security policy, and it's just the people who are in the, the senior management being too busy to care almost. But those people who want to leapfrog, you know, those people with a little bit of resources, a little bit of time, who can, like my wife has a small business and it's really helping her improve and improve her margins by automating things. You know, this is exponentially better than what she was doing before by just investing a little bit of time. It's just like anyone might learn a course. I think, you know, if, you've, if you're a small business watching this, you're thinking, do I weigh up spending 500 pounds or $500, whatever, yeah. on going to a course to learn about something or spend a day and a half learning some auto hotkey stuff? what's going to be more beneficial, beneficial to your business. I think have a look at auto hockey and, and have a think about doing that. You know, I, I forget if it was the webinar or the last webinar, it was a conversation. I know it was a conversation with more than one person, but um, I reached out to Jackie and a couple other friends after. And I'm like, Hey, I, I, I had thought about this like a couple of years ago and didn't act on it, but I'm like, you know, what if we had um, uh, an auto hotkey get together in Las Vegas you know, and, and just saw who would come and like make it a two day thing. And, and I'm like in Vegas, at least more people might be willing to go, but I, I reached out to, you know, I mean, basically a lot of people I'm talking to are in other countries. I'm like, that's a, a huge ask, right. Which I get. Um, but what you just mentioned there, I'm like, what if we had a, a virtual get together where we say, Hey, for these two days, you know, from, from eight to, to two, we're going to have a, a zoom like type classroom where we, we pick topics and we deep dive into them and everyone can share. And now that one, that actually I could see working. Right. And there's also like no risk, right. We could do it and just see who goes. Um, but that might be a, 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 that's a doable thing. Right. I, I, I like that. Um, yes, I agree. I agree. I'm up for it. <laughs> Let's go. Cause I, yeah. I, um, and again, cause I like you said, I, for me, it's the, it, the, I've forgotten, I think, more scripts than I can remember that I've written, yes. right? And the, when I start seeing other people do something, like, oh, oh, I actually did something like that where I did it this way. Like you, you were mentioning earlier, the different ways to, that I'm um, solving the same problem and how people tackle it. And, and yeah. of course, the other one, which which I, I was in that video with, with my friend Gabe, like I highly encourage Gabe and I, we, we, um, it helps so much having someone else that actually you, you kind of, you don't work necessarily with, but you can bounce ideas off of, you can hit, I have like, you know, four or five people that like, when I get, when I hit it before I actually go start talking, tackling a new topic, I'll say, Hey, I'm trying to do this. Have, have you, have you done worked in this area? So mm -hmm. I don't have to reinvent the wheel. First, of course, I search the forum, you know, and, yes. and, and things, but yes. um, yeah, it, it would well, be. Well, I, I often dive into the Discord chat and ask a question, which is a great resource again for people at Auto Hotkey if they don't use that. I jump in, ask a quick question, get a bit of a steer, and then I, you know, I do that. I often I learn a lot from, like you say, the forum, lifting a little bit of code, editing it for my own purposes. It helps you get further faster. And yeah. that is the interchangeability of, of uh, the code and Auto Hotkey makes that so simple. So I think it's a great resource. Um, why, why do you think. There's so many people who don't even is is it that don't don't bother to try to learn and not necessarily auto hockey right, but just to automate anything. Is it? Yeah, that's the million dollar question. I know. Yeah. I think yeah. I think that people. Uh, I think it's about as much about the business culture and about our businesses today, and people look at the clock, it's nine to five, they get paid their money. And I think they feel vulnerable if they, business themselves, I don't think re often re rewards innovation enterprise. Absolutely, yeah. Um, yeah. There's another There's another really yeah. awesome- well, actually, They might even punish people for thinking outside the box, right? Taking a different yeah. approach, yeah. Absolutely, and so if you're, not, if you're not incentivized, rewarded or recognized, and I'm not saying you need a monetary reward, but if you are appreciated, yeah. um, uh, then I think that that is one thing with the business is not not as supportive as it could be uh, either in you learning it or you applying those skills. And then also I think that people perhaps maybe senior management don't think it perhaps that micro level and obviously, um, you know, auto hotkey can affect things right at the coal face, right at the, you know, at the point of entry of, of, of content information, data manipulation, what have you. And if they're not in the weeds every day, they're not necessarily going to understand the pain points. But if you can empower your staff, 
and give them the rope to be able to do this. I think it, you know, that's probably, maybe it's perhaps, maybe it needs to be a more of a trickle up than a trickle down on this. And it needs to be a, but it's hard to mobilize enough people to understand the value. You need the leadership from the top to say, okay, we embrace, you know, optimization of and the way that we work. And then those grassroots, you know, the workers on the front lines being empowered to try some things because there is no great risk in, you know, hacking away with auto hotkey and writing some code to do some things because it's only really automating what your computer might otherwise do anyway. It's not like you're going to be doing anything nefarious or bad. Yeah. I I saw an article come through and I forget what the, the name of the thing was, but it was something in code insertion or something, but basically it, it, um, it wasn't what I did, but it was, to me, it summarized the fear that a lot of managers have is like, hey, I'm going to alter, you know, the way this thing works and actually literally break something or hack something. And you know, like, that's not what auto hockey is doing at all, right? We're, we're doing almost everything that I normally do, just automating it, you know, faster and more reliably, yeah. and quicker. I think that the way I would probably approach it if I was talking to someone in the C-suite would be the other way around. And I would uh, go and talk to them about uh, Kaizen and about continuous improvement and about this kind of thing. And then applying it to a corporate culture that is very much focused on technology. So um, there's a wonderful, wonderful guy called Paul Akers out of Bellingham, Washington. And he has a woodworking firm called FastCap. And he has an amazing video resource online about uh, fix what bugs you and about these little improvements that have improved the way that he works in his woodworking business, his, his workshop, right? And he's been able to, 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 to get his employees all focused on optimizing the way they work, the machines they use, and all of those sort of things. And it's almost taking that learning and understanding and applying it more to an office-based environment where technology, the interface rather than a screwdriver and a drill is actually a keyboard and a computer yeah. So I think that the way to go is actually to not talk about the, the tactic of using auto hotkey, but is to talk about the philosophy of, you know, the, the just in time yeah. Toyota based production system kind of model. And so, okay, apply those principles. And how do you apply that in an office setting? You apply that by looking at ways you might automate procedures and optimizing workflows. And there's a whole conversation we had around that. I think that's going to get the, you know, if you work in a big corporate company, that's going to get the management engaged because they can, they can find that accessible, understandable. And then the practicalities of, okay, how does that translate through middle management down to the front line, you know, data entry guy or, you know, the receptionist or whoever, that's where auto hotkey comes in. But at the senior level, that's not going to resonate. Yeah. And I, I think, I don't remember the name of it, but it, it sounds from your description, I, I know, um, around, I'd say around February this year, you sent me a link and said, Hey, check this out. And, um, it was a guy and at least the one I actually watched was a video where, um, he had this process and it looked like maybe, you know, one of his, his either daughters or, or, you know, a female employee. And they're like, we have this process that takes three minutes, you know, and they were like, we're going to look to ways to, to speed it up. And yeah. so they, what, what I loved was they didn't just say, here's what we have. And this is what we ended with. And then now it's like, you know, 10 seconds. They, they showed you the little bits of improvements and we, we did this. Now we had all these movements and they broke it down and then kept changing it, tweaking it and showing you the little incremental improvements. Right. Um, and, and I think you're absolutely right. Like it's almost, have you, uh, you've been in corporate America. I mean, have you ever heard of the, the, like the guy from blender, he, he, he's and, and he demonstrates, um, bringing in a blender and then how a blender and it shoves like a two by four in it or something and it shows how it does, but it's the demonstration, right? And this concept and it's powerful because yeah. it's totally not what you're doing, but yes. it gets people to think about a whole different yes. approach, right? And yes. I think that's how yeah. what you're describing could be used in that way to inspire people to realize, yeah, what do I do that takes all these different, so much time and now yeah. what, which in the video, they didn't explain how they did it. But I was when I was talking to Gabe, I'm like, look, when you when you take business courses, um, and especially in, in like in production in a, in a in a in a not a warehouse manufacturer you know type thing, they start looking like I forget the guy's name, but I know it was like I, I learned for doing mailers where you have like five sheets, you know, and I'd yeah. see people doing all this weird stuff, and I'm like, put them in a row, and you you know compartmentalize and do all this, don't do all the stuff, and then put them you know you know do group them together into things that make sense, and and yeah. you know. And it's so much more efficient and faster. I think those practical examples that people can relate to, because I think a lot of the time that the work that we do with development program, whatever, seems a bit mythical or a bit inaccessible. But 
when it's yeah. something tangible you can relate to. Another good example is what he often uses is the the Formula One, like the NASCAR type um, uh, um, uh, car, cha- the the wheel changing, the tire changing. Yes. So in the nineteen fifties, it was about two minutes, <laughs> and now it's like two point three seconds. It's insane. And I just optimized absolutely everything. And in fact, that's yeah. all we're doing with AutoHotKey is we're looking at how we can optimize processes, eliminate yeah. some steps and, and make it as more, more streamlined and improve the way that we do things. And, yeah. you know, and let the computer do what the computer's good at, right? And yeah. let the humans do what they're good at. Yeah. You bet. So I think that there's, that's another big takeaway. I think that's the way to get corporate America to buy in is to actually talk about the principle rather than the actual execution. Yeah. Which, uh, and I think that's a great, point because so often and of course the people who who are really going to drive it are those higher level people but the people like my boss level they are so non-technical that like they don't they just don't get it right but if you can start a little higher maybe get them to to get that push and like hey let's 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 really take this approach and look at things um then you got to get that fire burning, you know, in that middle management to actually, and, and have of course benefits for them, like the, the, the drive there that, that'll help them. And I think it's a broader cultural thing. Cause I think that, you know, it's not just about automating on a computer. It's actually the culture of the business actually yep. rewarding innovation and, and enterprise rather than just saying, we're going to keep doing what we've always done. Right. And uh, if you have that mindset of, okay, how can we improve every day? 1% or every week, every yep. month. You know, you're going to outstrip the competition. You're going to, I mean, what the guy uh, Blake has found is that in innovating every day, he's actually been able to reduce his, mar- uh, increase his margins, maintain or reduce his pricing. So he's happier because he's making more money and the company's happier. Uh, sorry, the customer's happier because he's able to deliver things quicker or, yeah. or, or the same or lower prices. Right. So automation can open those opportunities or at least this idea of continuous optimization and improvement. And that's what I think in the office environment with technology auto hotkey represents. Um, and something you said a minute ago reminded me of, of myself and that I was always the, the Socrates in that I would, I would ask people why, you know, when I start a new job, like, well, we do this. Well, why, why do you, why do you do this? Well, and often they didn't know, right. Someone taught them, this is the way we do this. And I'm like, but yeah but why are you doing, I mean, that doesn't make any sense. Why don't you think about like, how could we do this differently? And, and that questioning of, of why we do things a certain way, just often it's sad. It just doesn't happen. And anyway, yeah, sorry. That was a little off topic, but. No, no, I'm, I'm with you. Yeah. Um, when uh, I'm curious. So when, when you run into someone who's done nothing about auto hotkey, like, what do you, what do you explain to them of like, it is, how would you describe it? I don't know. Well, I think one of the problems with AutoHotKey is the name, to be honest. I think that it yeah. doesn't really say what it is. And so I don't. I talk in broad terms because it doesn't actually have to be AutoHotKey that it is. Sure. And often if, yeah. I'm trying to, if I'm trying to encourage someone to use it, I'll actually start, and I don't want to label on it too much, but I, I do start with hot strings because I think it's the most immediately accessible. It's the simplest thing to do. Um, and then more broadly, I, I talk about, you know, what types of things you could automate. Uh, and I, I basically let the, red, the imagination run wild and so you can pretty much automate anything which is my sort of starting point but um, I certainly think it's helpful to kind of contextualize and give some practical examples because people don't although the concept sounds great they don't really they can't think of what they might automate which is quite an odd, odd thing but it's almost that people don't realize what they do every day <laughs> which so I automate a lot of things that I repeat and I think that you don't realize that you repeat a lot of processes a lot unless you're in a mindset like us and we probably automate a lot of things so but i still uh, run into things i didn't realize i did all the you know i'm like oh man i didn't realize i was doing this over and over like i gotta do something for that yeah 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 so it's difficult to explain i think (laughs) is one of the problems you know um i think it all depends who it is what i would often do is show someone i think show and tell is the is the most powerful because like we get the personal satisfaction of writing something that works and saves us time i think the the wow factor is still something that i get a buzz out of when i show someone or teach someone how to do something um when they see the value or the ability i think then the penny drops and they start to to take an interest and and the best way to to help them see the value is when you've automated something that they actually do right something that, that that reduces their amount of work or um, just makes it faster or whatever it's it's yeah they they go wow that's amazing um yeah yeah no absolutely i think that's totally the way but i, I think that it's it does take a bit of time to although it is an extremely easy language it does take a lot of time to to master the dark arts and uh 
uh, people don't want to take that little jump. Uh, so that's why resources like yours and, and, um, and others online are, are really helpful in kind of helping people step through those processes, which I know I have benefited from a lot. I'm very grateful yeah. to you. Well, that was, and that was for me, um, one of the reasons why I started actually putting something on my website was I spent years, you know, I, I started when I switched over to the past, the hot strings and hot keys and started learning object oriented stuff. I, I was reading the forum and it, on learning to use calm to web scrape. And I had no background in, in using the Dom and using calm and, and, you know, and wow, it was tough learning. You know, it was, it, and I'm, don't get me wrong. There was that, that one original Jethro post, which talked through like little, I can't tell you how many thousands of times I went to that same thing and, and would reread it. And then I'd come back a month later and go, oh, Holy cow. Now I'm, now I'm understanding this part of it. Right. And getting yeah. it. Um, but sure. it, having it, it, it's still when you watch people do it in a video to me it it and and, and it, you see the flow it um, and there's just things that like you don't when you get code and no one talks about every little thing going on and it, it's just not the same and so that's why I, that's why for me I wanted I to think demonstrate. one of the most wonderful things Joe is the generosity of the community everyone is Absolutely. very everyone is very open to helping everybody else everyone is really pleased to share their code or their examples or their inspiration yeah. and uh, I think that's a really um, and everyone that I think uses it to any great degree is is an evangelist for it. That we love it, we see the value in it. You know, we are really happy to 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 participate in forums like this. And thank you for the opportunity today. Uh, it's great. I mean, I, I would like as many people as possible to use AutoHotkey because it is yep. it is a transformational tool in terms of the way that I work. It is. That's I I um I was talking to some of them. I'm like, you know, it literally changed my life. You know, I mean, like, yeah. I know, I think I was, because I wrote Chris Mallet, I said, I'm trying to get him to interview, hopefully he will at some point. But sure. I'm like, you, you do, it's hard for me to explain in words of like, what a difference in my life auto hockey has made, right? I mean, it's yeah. that big. Which people think is strange, but I mean, I, yeah. I remember the, the, a couple of weeks ago, I had to use another computer for a couple of minutes. <laughs> yeah. And it was like I was in a straight jacket. Yeah. Like, instinctively yeah. muscle memory, I had a couple yeah. of buttons to press to do a million things. And I was thinking to myself, how can anybody use a computer? Like this? <laughs> right. Because right. It, something that took me yeah. a couple of seconds and a couple of key presses yeah. took me 10 minutes. Well, it's funny because like even just like my passwords alone and logging into sites when I have to actually type that I have some really long, crazy passwords and like, uh, you know, typing them actually perfectly, you know, accurate is, is not easy for me. I'm like, Oh man. And, uh, and I even have, there's a, um, I use push bullet on my phone yep. Yep. and in push bullet, I can copy something on my computer and paste it on my phone. And so when I'm logging in on my phone, hopefully I'll buy my computer cause I'll type it on my computer and then paste it on my phone. And I'm like, Oh, that's, that's awesome. Um, yeah, 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 yeah. No, I like to, I mean, I do that as well. I, I like to, my vision, my utopia is that everything in my life as much as possible is automated. So I, I am doing some work around automating my phone as well and using my PC as, as part of a launch for that. I think it's a great opportunity to do that. Do, um, do you have some examples of, of what you can either talk through or show or however you want to do no, it? I'm really happy to. I think that's one of awesome. the great things that there's yeah. so many. Different I'll give you a few examples. So, um, I suppose the first thing, taking the next step on from hot strings that we talked about at the outset at the top. Um, so I was writing a book, uh, an ebook, uh, a couple of years ago, and uh, the US obviously you use imperial measurements, and some countries use metric measurements. Yeah. And what I was able to do, if you're thinking of like taking the next step beyond just static hot strings, was write some dynamic hot strings, which meant that when I was entering. Uh, um, distances or weights or things like that uh, in so i'm typing away my book la 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 and i might put in uh eight stone five pounds they would automatically in line convert that to pounds or to kilograms so i was able to contextualize things for different audiences yeah. whilst merely typing away so i think if you think if you realize that uh with hot strings you the next level i would say in terms of evolution is you can do math in line so you can do that you could add tax rates, all sorts of things, no. uh, convert time zones, all sorts of things, just as you're typing, you know, if you're a, if you're a newbie and you're doing that, that instantly I think is, is a value add. Um, one of the tools that I use every, every day, every hour of every day is I have a launcher. Uh, yeah. So I have a big, uh, maybe I can share my screen and show you. Sure. Uh, let's see if we can do that. Um, and uh, the launcher is, uh, let me know when you can see my yep. screen. It's coming up now. Okay, good. 
So the launcher allows me to uh, launch a lot of programs that I might want. Uh, and I, one of the, just before I show you that, one of the great things also about AutoHotKey is not only is it quick, and I know I'm preaching to the choir here, but for people who uh, mm -hmm. are new to this, um, not only can you uh, do things very fast, but, and this is something that I really appreciate about it, you, you can obviously um, iterate on a script. So you can start something and then you can you know, release it and then you can improve upon it as you sure. go. Absolutely. I, yeah. I think that's a really important thing. So I've done things that I think, oh, it can be better. So I'll make it better and better and better and better. So Absolutely. you can get in the game very quickly and then you can improve it. So yeah. um, uh, this is my launcher here. Wow. Which might look a bit, yeah. uh, uh, might look a bit untimely. But basically what I've done is I've got, um, this launches a whole lot of programs of mine. Yep. I color coded them so they were easy to. Uh, nice. yep. So, for example, Word is blue. You know, these are the colors of the programs. Yep. Yep. Um, and just to explain the kind of things I do, I launch, I open folders, I launch programs, I run scripts. I've got one to. I always had a very very messy keyboard uh, desktop, and yep. um, so I've got a. I know you can do this automatically, but I chose to do it when I wanted to do it. So I've got a clean desktop button which just runs a batch file to clean my desktop. So I've got some tidying files to tidy things up, some some programs, command line, all sorts of other things. And um, so I built this. So to give you an example of how this has evolved, if you're if you're uh, new to this, um, so I had this, and then I couldn't move it around. So then I found out how I could make it so it could move. Yeah. And then I thought, well, making these buttons is a real pain. So then I created a script to make the colored buttons. Yeah. Something called uh, Image Magic, which is a which is a command line tool to make uh, render images. So, um, and there's obviously a lot of other ways to do it. I don't do it the most efficient way. This script could be a lot improved, but right now it's incredibly useful. It's incredibly fast. I have one hotkey which launches it, and um, and that's it. So, this cool. one thing alone saves me so much time. Yeah. Um, another. Um, Another big thing that I had a problem with was managing files. And I know this is an ongoing problem that a lot of people have. And uh, so what I did for my work was uh, I created a uh, folder manager, um, which I just called up here. What this does is um, I've got some client job folders. So these are different clients of mine. And then um, I can choose the uh, title. So I could say it's test project with Joe. And then the type of project it is. What this actually does is it generates a generates a, a, a folder With a and template, it, yeah. a template. But also here I can write some notes. So, <clears throat> so this is a notes file. Um, and then I can also choose to assign it as a map it to a drive as well. Oh, cool. And then I can hit create. And what it's going to do is it's going to copy a whole lot of files yeah. across. Yeah. Um, it tells me it's created a, a map to drive. And then it'll open up um, the folder. Here we go. And it's created all of this information here. Okay. Um, here's the instructions that I created. Yep. Um, and what's important for me, because I do a lot of design work, uh, is it's created, uh, there's the notes. And then it's, I didn't realize you could do this till the other day. You could, everyone else will probably laugh when they hear this, but I've got, um, these are a whole lot of shortcuts. So you can actually, I didn't realize you could, or not there. You can do shortcuts to um, uh, where is it here? Product logos. These are actually shortcuts. The, the, these so I can reference in my like InDesign file these shortcuts to actual graphic files. Yeah. And then something else I did was this particular company has a whole lot of logos of different colors. So I then changed. This is not an auto hotkey thing, but I changed the icons to be the name of the the so for example this product called devx the icon is a d and it's the color of the uh, color of the logo so i tried to make things as really obvious as possible yeah um, sure in terms of workflow so and then every single file that i create for this particular client has the structure yeah um, I, yeah yeah gabe and i actually mentioned we both do something similar we don't i i liked the uh the automatic mapping to a drive like option because yeah. i didn't do that but um but yeah, we, we both did something similar to this of it automatically creates your template with, with whatever you want in it, right? And it just, and yeah. it's all, then it's all standardized also, right? So it's, it, you don't have to worry how you did what and which one and what's there. It's, it's you know, it's all automatic. 
Exactly. And the other thing that I've got is this instructions file that I write when it creates the folder, that gets read into the InDesign template if I want it to be. So the instructions are actually in the file I'm ready to use. Mm -hmm. And the third thing that I do is a lot of the time the projects are assigned by Basecamp. So it writes a Basecamp shortcut as well. So if I want to, so rather than going into Basecamp and trying to find the particular project in Basecamp, which is a project management tool, mm. I can double click on this and it will load the project, uh, the exact uh, project. Gotcha. Yeah. In the browser. Yeah. It'll find that's, it for you. Yeah. Yeah. So that's a really, really helpful thing. So um, yeah. I love that. Um, uh, something else that I do. To remember the I've got an hour I'm under scrutiny so I've got to remember the uh, all of the string yep. the commands um, whilst we do that let me show you something else then again these are small things that I think people in an office environment might find useful so I've got a hot string which inserts a um, inserts an image into uh, word or any other program that accepts images so um, I just type that and it inserts my wife's company logo. So cool. I've got the same for my signatures and things. So if we want to do a, a document very quickly, um, I just can type a hot string and it inserts uh, imagery. Uh, I'm curious, is that is that um, going and getting the file, putting it in memory and then pasting it or how, how did you? Yeah, it uses the GDIP library and okay. uh, I've got it somewhere. And uh, it's, uh, I can probably show you somewhere here. I use, uh, this is in site, but I do use uh, uh, Maestrius thing. Yeah, Auto Hotkey Studio. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I can't find it right now, as you can't. But it's, yeah, it, it, it uses the GDIP library and it, and it loads in the image um, okay. somewhere. Yeah. Cool. Anyway, so yeah, so so that's what I use for that. Uh, again, I mean, you see I'm using my launcher a lot because that's the thing that I love. Um, yeah. yeah. I've got this countdown tool that, I love as well. So I got this off the forum. So this is a, a little clock that I use. Oh, nice. Uh, yeah, it's really cool. And uh, I've hacked the sound so it makes a nice track when it, a nice audio track when it finishes. One, one, a book I recently read um, on on being um, efficient. You know, being just being more efficient. Recommended mm -hmm. having having clocks everywhere and knowing time. And, and but this is awesome because you have that countdown timer right in your face mm. and you could easily, I saw how you just adjusted it to, you know, different mm. sections. That's, that's really Yeah, cool. um, I think it's Parkinson's law, the time, you know, the project um, expands to fill the time. Yeah, so if you, absolutely. If you constrain the time, then you'll be yes. more focused. Yeah. Um, so that's something I try and do. So I have that, I just launched here another thing, which I know, I think you've got a different version of this. I wrote a little helper yeah. here. This, um, this is like a string handler. Yep. So I can convert with a click title, uppercase, lowercase, yep. replace. Um, that's very, very helpful. One of the things that I did to give a practical example for coding, and, and as always with AutoHotKey, there's a million different ways to do things, but um, I had um, something that I was doing in a, in a mail, an email client once uh, for sending out an HTML email. Mm -hmm. And uh, I, had to multi I had to search and replace multiple different uh, image uh, URLs. So yes. I've got a template and I've got say six different images I need to replace in multiple different places. Yeah. Okay. So one of the tools that I wrote in auto hotkey, again, very simple is just a multiple search and replace. Yeah. Yeah. Which is, if you think about it, a hot, I don't, I can't think of, there's almost no applications out of the gate that will let you search and replace say six strings at once. Right. Yeah. Right. I mean, there's probably things you can download specifically, but Microsoft products, no, maybe two at the most, one at a time. So right. those sort of incremental gains, if you actually map out what you do when you open re replace, you know, type in the string, you type in replacement string, hit replace, you know, you, you can say, I mean, I know, you know, I mean, people watching this, you can save so much time, yeah. so much time. And you have to create that once, right? And then you can use that function all the time. Yeah. Um, I don't know if you were on the webinar, but, but um, Brad, um, during the webinar, <clears throat> he, he brought this one where it was, it was interesting, his approach, right? It was very different than how I'd done it, but oh. he was using, I can't remember if it was Site or Notepad, but he would, he automated the, you know, he'd open it in, in let's say, Site, automated hitting the control H, and then automated sending, you know, the, the word to the search and the word to the replace and then doing it. And I'm like, but what, what, I'm not knocking them, right? But I'm like, but if it's a file, you know where the file is. Like Auto Hotkey can just read the text and automate that entire process much more reliably. Yeah. Um, but still, it was like, um, it, it's it's 
it's things that you're like, again, it's so much better than manually. If you have this list of 20 things, you got to search and replace. You're right. There's not a tool that I'm aware of that just you could have a tab delimited file, right? And say, now loop over these things and, and whatever's in the first one, replace it with the second one, right? And go. Yeah, yeah. Which actually, I, think, yeah. I don't know if you've done this, but the one, because I've run into it with URLs, it's not, and the one that I, I never have automated, which I should have at least considered is um, you run into problems with that when the short, you start on the shortest word and that word is a sub part of a longer word that, um, you know, you actually replace, you need to start with the longest words first, right? And shrink it down. So there's, there's not overlap. And then um, the one that I want to write is one that handles, um, I don't know if I'm going to make up a word here rather than concatenating, deconcatenating, <laughs> ripping, yeah. splitting uh, names. So for example, yeah. doctor period, Joe space yeah. lines, the third senior, whatever, and actually ripping that apart. Uh, yeah. And, it's something that I'm sure exists, but I, you know, I might write that to, because I have a lot of the time I have names, which I need to segment so I can say, hello, dear Joe or dear Mr. Yeah. Glantz. And I think that's another thing, obviously that's easy to do with auto hotkey is well, split that out. Um, I, in, in, I, um, there absolutely is. But the one thing I'll do like in Excel is, you know, Excel, um, easily you can, you can take an Excel file with them split, you know, with the, the words in one cell, and yeah. use a text to columns and tell it what use what character to, to split on, like a space yeah. or a yeah, column, yeah, yeah. And it yeah. automatically breaks them. And I'm like, anyone, I've shown people this, they're like, oh my God, you don't understand how long like I, I would take to do this. Yes. And like, it doesn't matter the delimiter, right? You just put in the thing and it does it. Now it's not perfect because sometimes there's more than one and this and that, but like it's, yeah. it is a quick, easy, like, yeah, yeah okay, I'll, well, I'll yeah. do that. When I'm in a hurry, I'll, I'll just do it that way. I get it done quickly. I'll show you another thing that I use a lot um, because I'm in a country which doesn't have English as the first language. Uh, yeah. I find it very difficult because obviously I'm English. I speak English. I type in English and I have a keyboard in English. So to correspond or do anything in a foreign language is, is ridiculous, right? Yeah. It's very difficult. So, um, so a few things. Uh, so first of all, way back to hot strings. Um, if I need to do something in a foreign language, I can type a hot string in a, in, in Latin, in my normal keyboard, and it can write it in, in uh, the foreign language. So um, just to give an English example, if I type, uh, uh, isn't it there, but I, I can, I have strings which um, put in um, foreign characters or special umlets or whatever for the, for the um, country. So, so that's all, all doable and possible. Uh, let me see if that works. There we are. So Espanol, I just did there, for example. Yeah. Uh, I, I, I wouldn't have a clue how to get the special squiggly thing on the end. Right. If I just type ESP, it's done it like that, right? So yeah. that's yeah. one thing that helps me with internationalization. Um, yeah. Another thing uh, which is much more interesting and exciting is uh, I can, uh, I've got the OCR software, which is in the forum. Uh, and if I go to a... Um, let me find a web page. Let's find a, I'm going to find a web page in a foreign language. Let me see. Here we go. Uh, okay. Let's try that. Um, I've got the, um, so here we go. This, this text here, and I know you've done demonstrations on this yourself. Uh, I've uh, added um, to the OCR tool, um, the, the optical character recognition tool, uh, handling of other languages. Yeah, that's so awesome. now, Which is huge for me because to give a practical yeah, sure. example, yeah. I've been doing a lot of design work lately and I've had, I've had flat images which are in um, Cyrillic characters. Yeah. And I would have, I have a clue what yeah. they say, yeah. how to type them on the keyboard. I'm screwed basically. Right. Yeah. And I know you've got a translator tool. That's great. Yeah. But, and I can plug in the translator, but now I'm able to... Um, now I'm able to uh, draw a box around it and, and detect the character. Oops. Um, detect the characters and then translate. Here we go here. So I've written a little minor to myself. Um, these are the keys I can press yeah. um, to detect the language and then, uh, then I'm good to go, right? So, um, and it's as simple, I think you've demoed this before. I draw a box around it. It's a little bit flaky, but it works normally pretty well. Uh, and it'll copy it to the clipboard. Uh -huh. uh, and then obviously from there, I can type it into a program. I mean, this is not a very good example because I could obviously, um, right. I could just copy and paste this, but right. um, here we go. Find it, yeah. And it's copied it. You can see down there. Yep. 
with the clipboard and then I can paste it in. So I, I wouldn't have a clue how to type that on my keyboard. So yeah. for me, this is amazing. And yeah. uh, obviously I could, I know you've done this in one of your videos, you've made it uh, translate. So I yeah. could actually do both. Uh, right. But the ability, which is incredible to be able to take an image that you have no idea what it says, detect it in a foreign language and then translate right. it and also paste it in is just a game changer for me what I have to yeah. do. Yeah, I hadn't thought of, that's a it's a interesting um especially cuz cuz my experience with this was I had um people cuz uh, at TI that we worked with, you know, I had people in China and Japan and mm -hmm. you name it and uh, they come over and they it was more of the reverse they would be doing stuff in english and they're like i don't know what this means and so i made a simple thing to highlight it hit a button and it would translate it into simplified chinese for them and they're like oh my god you don't understand how much time that saves us but i, I had never thought about because i didn't have to deal with them right we didn't yeah. they took care of their language stuff but um you're right i would i'd be clueless if i couldn't grab the text um yeah Besides yeah. understanding it, but actually yeah. typing it is, yeah, yeah that would be. Well, and the other thing, just to think about it, this is a slightly tangential, but uh, auto hockey is portable, right? So if you're going to a country, yeah. you don't understand anything, put it on your hot, your, you put it on a USB stick and take it with you. Yeah. You know, and that way you can do this when you're in the, in the Thai uh, or the wherever, you know, uh, internet cafe, you can use it and actually figure out what on earth you're doing. Um, so that's really helpful. Um, a couple of others, one that I know that you use a lot that I that I think you taught me about that I absolutely love and I use it every day like you is the uh, is the image yeah. uh, clipper. Yeah. This is this along with hot strings, if you're starting with a lot of hotkey, I think this is the other one to go with because this is again incredible. Especially if you use it like a laptop, right, with limited yeah. space. It, it I actually I contacted because I I've paid someone to develop apps for me on a phone. And I demonstrated this. I'm like, can I make this? Can you make this for my phone? I want to make this. And mm -hmm. they they looked into it. They're like, it's it. We're not quite where we can, you know, make it yet. Um, but it it the smaller your screen size, the more valuable it is to be able to to grab a little spot and keep it up there while you move around the other one. Yeah. 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 No, you bet. I I think that is amazing. Amazing. Um, a couple of other things that I do that are a bit harder to show you. I don't have them on this machine. Is um, uh, with uh, Spotify, which I have, I do the media controls by key presses. So I can forward, back, mute, whatever, stop using uh, control and the cursor keys, which is great. So I can have it playing in the background and if I want to change the track, uh, with you can use the Windows Media Controller, uh, yeah. you can take that over and you can control it with key presses. Right. right. So I can move my, um, my uh, sh shift, shuffle or shift my tracks uh, doing that. Um, what else can I share with you? Um, something else that I do, which again is a lot of these things that I actually do are really simple and really small. Um, I tend not to make really long scripts. I, I tend to make them, you know, no script that I write will take more than a couple of hours probably. Um, yeah. I've done a couple of huge ones, but what happens, I tend to have to come back to them and I forget what I've been doing. Yeah. Yeah. So better to write smaller functions and things. I have a really simple thing, um, building upon what we talked about earlier which is I had a key and um, here and I have a thing which pulls up an input box and just says what's bugging you. Yeah. So I, I basically have like a running list of little things that I think, you know, I could fix or make better. Oh, interesting. Yeah. yeah. You're, so you're, you're I, I might to remember what to yeah. work on. Yeah. Cool. Exactly. So I, I literally just hit um, window B yeah. and it calls this window up yeah. um, and then uh, close it and that's it done. Right. It's yeah. gone into my little memory bank. Yep. And then I control window B and then here's my list. Yeah. And it's just a text. It's just text. That's all it is. So here's a list of cool. things that annoy me that I want to fix. Yep. Um, yeah. It just concatenates or it just adds it to the, to the top of the, to yeah. the thing. And that's it. And that, I mean, that's super simple, but I've got yeah. that for that. I've got, I think I've got a t-shirt one. I've got a scripts one. I think you'll laugh. I mean, I got, I could, I can, hold up I, I i use these little three by five cards i write, might write my little list of like things i gotta yeah. work on but yeah. i i might switch over to like this approach um although i still like for or anyway i'll, I'll think about i understand it. i'm gonna tell you what i else i do which might might make you uh, a convert is i also i actually write this to google drive so it's on uh, my phone uh-huh yeah. on my phone and it's just really low friction yeah. but i I totally agree with you about surrounding yourself with work because it, it helps focus you. And I do like that. I was a bit resistant to doing this, 
but actually I found it really good for one reason, which is getting it off my mind. Just in that split second, yep. one split key, writing it down, done. And I can take it with me. So I find that really helpful. Here's the um, other thing that, that I learned years ago, though, I'm just curious, is uh, on this topic in specific, is I learned there's, there's almost nothing more enjoyable than literally crossing something off the list when you're done with it. Right. I agree. And, and when you delete it from the list, I'm not, you don't see it after you do it. And so I'm sure it's rewarding, but you don't I, see it after the I like, agree. Oh, I agree. I, I want the list. I want to cross it. I agree. The tactile, there's something yeah. about yeah. crossing it off your list, isn't it? Yeah. I totally agree. You, you can't replicate that. Yeah. You're old school, Joe, on, uh, yeah. on yeah. a computer. I totally agree. I, and I actually, just on that point, I actually write down really, really small tasks. Yeah. Because I like the buzz of completing things. So yeah. rather than say, today I'm going to do X, right. Right. I write down every little step of X. <laughs> that's a really good point because the things I, typically I write down, I don't write down the really big stuff that's going to, you know, it, it's like, what am I doing today? Basically, yeah. like here's the things yeah. I got to do. Um, but um, I can see how yours, it's much better, especially because I might find myself in my car um, and I could pull up that list and go, oh, you know what? I needed to call my bank today and, and my credit card got, hacked recently so i had to do all this stuff and like if i could have seen that list of things in other but places don't get me wrong i do what you do as well i use yeah. this specifically this is specifically yeah. for things which yeah. bug me typically to do with my computer or things that require technology yeah so if I've got, and they're often very small things like for so for example um and often auto hotkey actually solves these problems um I can't find files or a, uh -huh. an application isn't loading properly, or I have an error message that always happens with any, these little things that you do over and over and over and you ignore yeah. them. And yeah. if you just spent a second to fix them would give you much more satisfaction and a much more seamless experience. So I purposefully write almost inconsequential things. Yeah. Those little, little annoying, those little, little bugbears, right. Yeah. And try and cut them out. And I, I've, cut out so many little things it I, I was just thinking it, it almost now you need some fuzzy matching to do this but what would be cool is a way to increment as you're doing it like to say this has happened three times right of like to help you prioritize really how often it's happening um to, yeah. to realize like oh you're right this is a bigger thing than i thought it was because it's 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 coming up more often or, or well, to kind of go back full circle on our conversation here what what one of the things which i asked in the forum the other day which would be great if uh, auto hockey did out of the gate was just with hot strings figuring out how many times you used a string or even just doing a key logger to see how many times you typed a particular phrase because in terms of building the business case or justifying to people hey did you know that you typed this a million times right. uh like i don't i you know, if I want to say salutation, I just BWR, best wishes, Ryan. I mean, I, I've got, yep. there's one million things that I, yep. I must have exponentially cut down my key presses and the things that I do. Um, and unfortunately, I think sort of talking big picture for a second, it's really hard to measure time saved. Oh, absolutely. And I think that's the big picture problem. Because yep. if you could lay down on a piece of paper and go, I mean, if it's a, if it is a, some processes are obviously very easy, but those small things will actually Absolutely. end up being the most of your time. Are really That's hard right. To yeah. It's, it's hard to measure because it took you three seconds, but you went from, or let's say four seconds and you went down to one second, um, but you use it 50 times a day, right? Yeah. It starts adding up. Um, yeah. I actually saw, uh, it was like a mem that, that showed how many times, you know, the frequency of use and how long, how much time you saved. But they did it, they made a static, because it, it was literally a mem, right, of like over five years. I'm like, five years to me is, is I, I don't have many things that I use for five years, right? That's too long of a projection. I want it to be like for, you know, well, I can convert it to a week, you know, a month, a year, um, and be able to click those. And then I can look at it and go, man, if I'm doing this 20 times a day and it saves me five seconds, holy cow, in, in a week, I'm going to save an hour, right, or whatever it is. Yeah, yeah, you bet, you bet. I mean, I, there's no shortage of things that I want to automate and things that I can improve. I think that I would say, you know, start small yeah. and then and do it incrementally. Don't bite up more, bite off more than you can chew. And whatever you do, I'm sure even you, with your great knowledge, could improve upon things that you're doing now. So absolutely. Um, oh, I, I'm you horrified. Have to do everything out of the gate. You can just improve yeah. it bit by bit, right? I, I, um, I purposely don't go and look at if I have stuff that works, you know, and there's no issues. 
I purposely don't look at it because because when I wrote it, like it, chances are, it's so crappy as far as how it you know how I wrote it. But it works. I don't care. I'm not one of those yeah. that's perfectionists. Like it works. Um, yeah. The other thing, like when I first started the TI, I was so fortunate that um, I was uh, taking over for a lady that did this job, and she let me spend a couple of weeks, like. Um, where I said, just, you know, can I have some time to help try to, you know, automate this instead of just doing it. And, and I had a couple of weeks where I, I was able to learn the object learning stuff and do all the stuff. And like, that just doesn't happen, right? Where you can like step into a job and not actually do anything. But so after that, after I took over for her, then what I, if I had a new thing I had to work on, I didn't try to automate the entire thing. I would automate a part of it. And then next time when I came back to it, I would increment a little bit more of like, now I'm going to automate grabbing this or sending it there or doing whatever. And, and then, and then move forward to the next week. I'm like, Hey, you know what? I'm going to, I'm going to do this part of it now. And it allowed me to still be productive and it slowly, I, I hadn't thought about it. I was incrementally improving, right? It was that, that overall concept because I had to still get work done or, or, you know, people would, you know, I'd get in trouble. Um, the other, by the way, the other thing, this lady used to spend um, a week out of the month, doing this one actually it was an email and we would we look at the emails for next month that we're going to get sent and she would do all this work to show the counts on each email and we're sending over a million emails a month right so it's a lot of you know different sends and she would do all this work to to then have a call saying hey your email schedule for this day it's going to have this many people right and um we'd have about 40 emails and and about four people would show up to the meeting to care and it was just it was and then here was the thing almost always everything changed. Nothing went out on the schedule. Nothing ever worked as planned. And so when I took over, I literally just stopped doing it. Right. And I didn't tell anybody. And, um, and then I just canceled the meeting. And so like a couple months go by and she comes, she's like, Hey, how's this going? I'm like, yeah. She's like, I said, I, I stopped it. She's like, you what? I'm like, I, I just stopped doing it and no one complained. And she's like, she had been doing it for years. Right. And it took a quarter of her time. And I just, I just stopped doing something that I thought no one was going to really care about. And I was fortunate nobody did, but um, it was funny. It was one of those things like you talk about automating things, which I started to automate it, but I realized like no one cares about this. Like just stop doing it and save an amazing amount of time. I think that one of the ways I think that you can lead a horse to water, perhaps someone who doesn't understand technology or doesn't get this stuff is to take a piece of paper and a big piece of, a big piece of paper and a pen Yep. And write down, do a flat, like when I say a big piece of paper, I mean a giant, like I have like, like meter wide pieces of like three yeah. foot long, okay. huge bit of paper yeah. and write down with, with them in a flow chart yeah. the process because, you know, yeah, see, I don't have any background in programming and a, and a guy I worked with, which actually I'm, I'm going to do an interview with him coming up here, Benny Wynn. He, he has a background in technology. He, he, when I first automated an API process, I did it all in my head, right? I figured all this out, this workflow and all this stuff. And then I forget why it came up, but um, he, he did, he, he did, and I forget what it's called. It, it's some sort of a chart that, that in technology, this is what they do and showed everything and had the proper, you know, groupings of stuff. And it blew my mind. I'm like, Oh my God, it's, I said, no wonder why this was so hard for me to figure out. Right. I had so many different things it was doing and, and it really taught me to think about the whole workflow, right. And, and yeah. grouping and, and, and then it, yeah. it's clearer. If you do this process mapping with someone who basically you're asking them to please explain your job visually in steps, right. And then you can start to understand, okay, is the order of the flow, right? Are there any things that are not necessary and are there any things that can be automated? Oh, gotcha. Yeah. And, and a lot of the time, if you say, Oh, what do you do? They articulate it and write, they articulate it verbally. Right. But unless they, but, and, they articulate it verbally or to articulate it in writing can be long and cumbersome, right? But if they articulate it visually, yeah, right? visually and yeah, language, topic high yeah, level, yeah, yeah, everyone I can understand. It can be a high level. Yeah. You can understand yeah. what things you could automate. You can understand what things you optimize, what things you could re remove. And it's the fastest right. way I think to yeah. unpack the knowledge in the yeah, head I love it. and also be not, and not threaten them in the sense that, oh, I'm going right. to do this voodoo. You're not going to understand. Right. You take them with you on the journey. Well, and, and I'd say it's a critical part of that, which you were alluding to, but is to, to write in the timing, how long it takes each of yeah. those little, those parts of it, right? Because that yeah. you got to, you can look at where you can optimize. And that's where you're like, this thing that only takes you two seconds, it, you know, chances are I'm not going to, you know, have a big win there. But this thing, it took you seven minutes, 
right? That like, hey, it's it's something you're just copying and pasting from one to the other. You know, that one we can, you know, we can probably knock it down to 10 seconds, right? Or something. And, and they might have a throwaway comment to say, oh, I copy and paste it in, the copy and paste it into here, right? But the whole, but, and that sounds superficial. But when you realize, and you know this, but just to articulate it again, when, when you have 20 things to copy and paste and you yeah. think about context switching of yeah. open, open up, if you think about the steps, open word, copy, yeah. switch to Excel, paste, yeah. you know, all of this context switching as well takes time, memory resource, focus. Yeah. Every context switch is an opportunity to go and then check Facebook or check your phone or... Yeah. Right? And, so yeah. If you can eliminate all of that. Right, when it's manually, when you're doing it, yeah. yeah. And there's no mistake. So all of that stuff, I think, is very, very powerful. When when the penny drops for them, that they can see that, and I think often visually will help. If you, but when I was um, working as a project manager on doing development projects, I'm not, I'm not, I'm technicalish, but I'm not like you. I'm not a programmer. We would often write briefs visually, like not with the pretty pictures necessarily, but yeah. with flowcharts, with yeah. with you know, looking at functionality, with screenshots and things, because it allowed us to articulate both for the client. And the tech, and be the bridge from the client, if you like, to the developers, in a in a language they could both understand. And I think that's the kind of thing when you're finding it difficult to get people to embrace auto hotkey is to actually try and articulate things visually um, within the kind of a flowchart. So the person who you're doing it for understands, and also the person who's developing it can understand, and you can explore things together. I remember what I was saying. What was I saying? Yeah. yeah. Um. Yeah, that, that's a great, you know, maybe that should be one of our topics for a webinar of just that general process of, hey, let's, let's pick something and then walk through how you would break it down yeah. into a visual summary of the yeah. sections and parts um, and to help realize like, hey, you know what, this is, here's the things, um, granted it's for obviously a little bit bigger of a task, but it, it's fine, right? I mean, that's how you really, honestly, I, I, we were just talking about how often, even if something takes you you know, five seconds, but you do it, you can get down to one second and you do it a hundred times a day. It's a big win. But um, more often than not for me, the ones that took me like seven to 10 minutes that I get down to be 30 seconds. Those are the ones that I was like, I was willing to invest more time in thought yeah. process and automating because mm -hmm. they're also painful to do right. And you really feel it. Um, but don't, don't take away from those little wins of like, damn, you know, I had this one like in, when I was doing all those emails, all the emails in our web um, our browser, we would have to archive the campaign sends and there would be thousands of these things. And you literally, I could select all, but the problem was the all included our current ones and I didn't want to archive our current ones. And so I had to literally go through and click, click, yes. click check boxes. Yes. And I'm like, this is yes. crazy. So I wrote like a three line loop in auto hotkey yes. to do, you know, send space bar. I'd be on it, send space bar and then send one, two, three tabs. Oh, then you're on the next one in space bar. And then I would say, loop this like 30 times and I could hit my loop and it would go, bling, you know, and highlight them all. And then I would do, oh, I need another 30, bling. I think uh, you can make fun of it. I had this exact same thing with my wife the other day where she yeah. had an old email account and with something yeah. like 20,000 emails she wanted yeah. to deliver. Right? And I said, okay, this is a great little game you can play if you develop, if you're auto hockey person. I said, okay, I'll start at like 5,000 you do the first 5,000, I'll do the last 5,000. <laughs> That's awesome. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I wrote a script in like two minutes, which was just doing exactly what you said, just literally with the yeah. column, just next page, next page. Yeah. And I, we were in the same room and I went to get a cup of coffee. I put my feet <laughs> up and she's like, what? This is ridiculous. That's, and, you know, that's, that's a awesome. really great manifestation of the power. Right? Yes. Yes. I love it. Yeah. Um, I wonder if we could do something like that remotely, like in that, auto hotkey like webinar thing where we we have like a contest of you know a, a comparison of you know just finding different ways to different approaches um solving uh, what are they a hackathon like type of thing right where you're like here's here's what you need to work on go and have you know 10 different people everyone working on it i'm sure often there'll be a lot of similarities right in how we approach it but it is yeah. to your point earlier like actually your example with inserting that image in word um mm -hmm. i had a different I total idea than how you solved it um, and there's no right or wrong answer, right? It's it's what what works consistently and how the example code you had before you could borrow from, right? Like that to me is is one of the best ones. If there's something already out there, I can steal it from, you know. That's I'm doing it that way. Yeah, no, absolutely, you bet. Uh, yeah, that's right. I, it's just there's so many ways to do things, which opens up opportunities to also improve upon things because there is a resource and so much. Uh, 
code out there you can learn from you and you can adapt uh it yes. means that everyone and it because everyone's willing to contribute uh you know things can get better and better and better and evolve which is wonderful it's not a, not a closed community it's very open and everyone's happy to participate yep. and contribute. yeah and that part of it it's um it, it, for me, because what I share back in the, I don't share that much stuff, uh, like maybe in Excel or something, I, I would demonstrate like, hey, well, here I had to go and grab a different worksheet and do this thing to it. But often the stuff, especially when I was at, at Corporate America, it was so specific. I'm like, I, it, it won't really help for me to share this code because no one can access these tools, whatever. I can still share the overall approach of what I did, right? The concept to help teach this is possible. But um, yeah, that, that's where I love things with, um, web scraping or Excel or email or whatever, because so many people use them that you can borrow from. But the um, the sending of controls and and, and whatnot. Yeah, are, are, yeah. I mean, I, we haven't talked about it today, and and I know we 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 haven't got time. But I do use a lot of web scraping too. I know a lot of others have touched on it, so I won't. But I I also use it for that, and it's it's amazing. Uh, well, you know, yeah, you and I forget exactly what it was, but I know you you owe me one. Right for the uh, the example, of what was it of di of uh, launching programs from a browser? Yeah, we we yeah. were doing we were doing a, a filling out a form with some event listeners, and Joe, you were very yes. helpful to help me oh, solve that. Mercy, that yeah, yeah. I, I literally had to to record those videos to teach my remind myself like when they came up, like how to deal with them, um, and it was only from working with Jackie and um, I think Chad helped too, or Mason, yeah. um, of like because. I don't have any background in, in that stuff. And like, I, I remember posting questions to the forum and I think Tink was like, well, you just do this. You look for this. I'm like, or Lexicos maybe. I'm like, I don't even understand like what your reference. I have no concept. Like, like I don't, yes. you know, can someone give me an example? Cause like, just to say, go do this. Like it makes no sense to me. I, I don't know how to explain. Like it's, it, it's like reading your Russian, whatever. Right. I'm like, I don't understand what you're talking about. Exactly. Exactly. So yeah, no, it's, uh, it's really helpful. Cool. Well, um, this has been awesome. Is there anything else you want to, any other examples or anything? No, I think that I've gone through the, the top ones. I just want to say, you know, if you don't use Hotto Hotkey, then get into it because, uh, you know, both Joe and I are evangelists for it. We love it. And everyone's uh, there happy to help. So jump in. Yeah. And, um, you know, expand your horizons as to far as to how you use it. Right. I mean, we, we both, and it sounds like had a very similar parallel, you know, onboarding of hot strings and hot keys for quite a while. And then like suddenly starting to use all these other, and, and it is just, and it's so endless. It's so many different ways you can tackle it. Um, it's, it's unbelievable. Yeah. Awesome. Right. Well, th hey, Ryan, what's your, your handle or name on the forum? <laughs> so it's R two nine nine seven seven nine zero. Easy to oh, remember. That's simple. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. R two nine nine seven seven nine zero. An old phone number. Once. Oh, interesting. Cool. <laughs> awesome. Thanks. Well, uh, this has been awesome. Thank you for taking the time. Um, and keep at it. And it, I love seeing you in the webinars too. I know if the timing is off, also often off because you're in Europe or it's difficult. But um, it's great seeing you there. Um, thank you. Thank you so much. Thanks for you too. Bye-bye. Thanks. Bye. Thanks so much, Joe. Bye now.